exaggeration, within like 15 seconds of me setting my camera down, I heard behind me a train coming. I think we're good now, so we're all set up. And let's get right into the video. So over the past couple of months, I've been shooting pretty much non-stop with this camera right here, the Hasselblad 500CM. If you haven't watched my video about this camera yet, I'll link it right here in the top right hand corner, watch it after this video, but it's pretty much a six by six medium format camera that shoots 120 film. So it's super high resolution, super high quality film, and this camera is unreal. Today, I wanna talk about the difference between negative film and slide film, and why you would care about the difference between them two, and when you would use one versus the other. So this past weekend was Memorial Day weekend. And because the weather is no longer garbage here, as you can see by me actually wearing a short sleeve shirt for the first time, um, we went out to my family's lake house. I brought a bunch of my friends, a bunch of my family out there, and we spent three days on the lake. I spent those three days not really filming because I kind of wanted to take the weekend off for the first time in a while, but what I did do is shoot a ton of film on this. I shot, I believe, six rolls of Portra 400 and Portra 160 film, which is a lot of film for me. And as soon as I got home on Tuesday, I got them all developed and scanned them as soon as possible. And literally just as I was finishing scanning all of those rolls of film, I realized there was a package on my doorstep from the lab in California that I sent my slide film to with a bunch of my slide film that I was getting developed. So. I scanned all of that film, and pretty much what I was doing was comparing the appearance and the different characteristics of the two types of film, slide film and negative film. And it sort of inspired me to create this video where I want to compare the difference between negative film and slide film. So that's what we're going to do right now. So first things first, color negative film and slide film are both color film types. However, they're very different. The first thing that's different is how they're processed or how you develop them. Slide film is developed using E6 processing, whereas color negative film is developed using C41 processing. C41 processing is a little bit easier to do yourself and it's also more commonplace, so more places will do it and likely for cheaper. E6 color processing is a little bit different, not as many places do it and you'll typically pay a little bit more money to get it done. I actually send all my slide film out to the dark room in California to get my slide film done because none of my local shops will do it. Once your film is developed, the first thing that you'll notice is that they look entirely different. Color negative film actually comes out as a negative, so all of the colors are completely inverted and it looks nothing like the final image should look like. You have to put it into special software or you have to scan it in a special way or process it in a special way in order to make it come out colorful in the way that you would imagine it. Whereas slide film actually comes out as a positive right out the gate. It looks exactly as you imagined it when you took it and slide film right off the bat, right after it's developed, is a lot easier to color correct because you have a color reference right on the film slide to go off of. Whereas negative film, your eyes can't naturally flip the colors and figure out exactly what it's supposed to look like. So besides the way that it looks initially right after it's developed and the way that the film is developed, there's a number of differences between these two film types. And we're gonna break it down into a couple different categories. The categories we're gonna talk about today are sharpness, color, dynamic range, film speed, versatility, and finally, when you might wanna use one film versus the other. First category, sharpness. So slide film in almost all cases is going to be sharper than negative film. This is a result of how fine the grain is on the film type. So film obviously is made up of chemicals, not pixels. So the grain and how fine it is usually defines how sharp a film type is. There are color negative films that are extremely sharp. However, in general, color slide film or slide film is much sharper than negative film. But in all honesty, unless you're scanning it at super, super high resolution and you're really pixel peeping it, you're probably not gonna notice that much of a difference in sharpness. However, if you're trying to get the absolute sharpest image possible, slide film is gonna be the way to go. All right, so the next category is going to be color. In general, slide film is much more colorful, much more saturated, and much more vibrant than color negative film is. So I'll show you a comparison of some of the Velvia 100 slide film images I've taken over the past couple of months right now. And I'll also show you a comparison of some of the Portra 400 and Portra 160 color negative film that I've shot over the past couple of weeks right now. So as you can see, the slide film is considerably more vibrant, it's more colorful, and the Portra film is a little bit flatter. Me personally, I like the look of the more saturated Velvia a lot. In good lighting conditions, I like it a lot more than I do Portra film, however, it does not come without its own trade-offs. So the biggest trade-off that comes with slide film is definitely gonna be its dynamic range. There is no question about it, 
color negative film, especially something like Portra 160 or Portra 400, is so much better in terms of dynamic range. With something like Velvia 100 or Provia 100 slide film, it's extremely hard to get an even exposure in harsh lighting conditions. Say if the sun is setting in the background, like that picture of my brother on the ATV, and you have a person in the foreground, there is almost no way that you're going to be able to get an even exposure of the person in the foreground and the sun in the background. You're gonna have to choose one or the other and either you're gonna lose shadow detail or you're gonna lose highlight detail. As you can see in this image, I chose to preserve the highlight detail so that my brother became a little bit of a silver at. If I was to shoot that on something like Portra 400, I would have likely retained almost all of that shadow detail, so you'd have been able to see what my brother was looking like, what he was wearing, and the whole nine yards, and I would have most likely also been able to retain the sunset going on in the background. Portra 400 and other color negative films are extremely versatile in the sense that you can actually overexpose them by several stops and still retain highlight detail, which makes their dynamic range just considerably better than that of slide film. Next thing we gotta talk about is film speed versatility. So, with film you obviously cannot just randomly change the ISO of your film type. Whatever type of film you buy, it's gonna come at a set ISO. You can maybe push or pull at one or two stops in either direction, but your film speed is set by the film type that you purchase. With slide film, the only film speeds that you can really get that are commonplace are either 50 or 100. Whereas if you compare that to color negative film, there's a number of different film speeds that you can get ranging from 100 to 200 to 400, 800, 1600, or even 3200. This makes color negative film a hell of a lot more versatile for shooting in low light conditions or for situations where you wanna have a higher shutter speed and just a more sensitive to light film type. Finally, let's talk about when you might wanna use one film type versus the other. And personally, I don't really think there's a specific use case for any film type. I personally use slide film and color negative film for all of my different work, whether it be portraits, landscape, street photography, or anything. I use both types of film, quite frankly, and I don't think that there's a specific use case for either of them. There are, however, differences between the two film types that we obviously need to be cognizant of that we've been talking about for this whole video. So if you want the sharpest possible image with the most vibrant possible colors, you're gonna wanna go with slide film. However, on the other hand, if you want something that's versatile in low light and that's gonna have the highest possible dynamic range and that's gonna allow for you to get a little bit of a higher shutter speed in order to freeze action, you're gonna wanna get color negative film. There are differences between the two. I don't think there's specific categories of photography that they're both perfect for. I think you can quite frankly use them for anything. However, there are trade-offs and differences between the two that you need to be cognizant of before going out and shooting with it. Me personally, I like to experiment with them both. I shoot portraits, landscape, street photography, everything with both types of film, and I think they both give you really unique, distinct looks, which is a ton of fun to experiment with. So I think that you guys should do that as well. If you enjoyed this video, if you learned something, or even if you just love shooting film, please give the video a thumbs up. It helps out the channel a ton and I'd really appreciate it. If you like the video and you wanna see more content from me, I upload videos like this every single week, so hit that subscribe button. Before I sign out the video, I'm gonna do a little bit of a montage of all the photography that I've been doing over the past couple of weeks. I actually got a roll or found a roll of film from last year from Zion National Park that I re-scanned because I figured out how to scan my film better. And so I'll roll through some of those photos as well because some of those are awesome. I love those photos and I can't wait to get back out west. So thank you all for watching. I appreciate it big time and I'll see you next week. Peace.